Senator Marco Rubio joins us now. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good to have you here. Good. Thank you. Um, so these other campaigns are betting that this is your Achilles heel, uh, that, that they're going to try to prove that you are sloppy and irresponsible when it comes to money. What do you well, say? I own one home. It's the only debt I have in the world is the mortgage on my home. And actually, I think it would be good for this country to have a president that knows what it feels like to have your house lose its value because of irresponsible and reckless behavior by Fannie and Freddie, by the Federal Reserve. I think it would be good for this country to have a president that knows what it's like to owe money in student loans like I once did. Someone who grew up paycheck to paycheck. That's why I look forward to that debate with Hillary Clinton. How is she going to say that I don't understand the plight of people that are struggling in America when I myself, through my parents and our upbringing, lived it? Uh, so I'm proud of where I come from. My parents weren't rich people, but I'm proud of what they left us with, which is the chance at a better life, and we've been able to achieve. And so I look forward to that debate, especially against the Democrats. You know, when you look at every candidate, they have their thing. You know, if you scroll back and look through news articles over time, mm -hmm. um, you'll find something, right? And this is sort of what it is for you, this credit card issue. Um, explain what your take is right. on that, because now they're saying, uh, well, over the next uh, month or so, you're going to release these other credit card um, reports from right. when you were um, I at the state level. What, what are we going to yeah, find? Yeah, and it's, and it's actually a discredited attack. I mean, that, for example, a Democratic activist, when I ran against Charlie Chris, they filed a complaint, and th they, the Ethics Committee looked at it and dismissed it. Uh, it was a charge card with American Express, and I was secured under my personal credit and in conjunction with the Republican Party. And every month, I would go through the bills, and if there was something on there that was personal, I paid it directly to American Express. And if it was the party's, the party paid for it. And, of course, the media, when they initially reported, kind of con convoluted all this, and so it creates these stories. But it's been largely discredited, and uh, we'll address it. We have no problem addressing it. I'm running for president. But I think this campaign has to be about the future of America and about what kind of country we're going to be in the 21st century, and that's what I'm going to continue to focus my attention on. So. You know, one of the things I find interesting, and no doubt in this coming debate, which is also going to focus on, on business issues, um, you know, if they're trying to portray you as, as irresponsible, Trump is trying to portray himself as a good businessman, and yet he has not really been pushed on this issue of the bankruptcies that his companies, he, he's like, that's the way everybody does it yeah. you know that, that that's fine and yet there are people out there who are owed money um, by his companies is that is that something that well it's be been touched on and he explains it as you said by talking about you know how he used the bankruptcy code to help is his that company an, is that, succeed that sure, because you? I mean ultimately well I think that's important for voters to continue to focus in on you know and I think I hope he'll continue to be asked about it because it's legitimate I can tell you for me it's true I didn't inherit any money I mean my, my parents weren't able to pay for me to go to school so I had student loans that I had to pay off we owned a home in Miami and like anyone who bought a home in Miami in 2005, because of the housing meltdown, it lost value. It's recovered some. Today, the only debt I have in the world is a mortgage on my primary residence. And I think it's good for our country to have a president that knows what it's like. For example, because of Fannie and Freddie, because of the Federal Reserve and this irresponsible behavior, what it's like, despite the fact you did nothing wrong, to see your home lose its value. Millions of Americans have gone through that. Um, the same with the student loans. You know, we have young Americans out there owe thousands of dollars in student loans, often for degrees that don't lead to jobs. And I think that experience, having lived through that, is what makes me so passionate about fighting on behalf of Americans who today are struggling. Millions of working Americans who open up the newspaper and read how Wall Street's having record years, how these cronies that are close to the Clintons are doing so well economically, but they continue to struggle, the fact that the fact, despite the fact they work harder than ever. We're going to show two polls that um, are very good for you that we just mentioned in the intro, but we also want to ask you about the a Florida poll, one out there, that shows you and Jeb both trailing behind Donald Trump. He um, believes that that, I think, is mostly based on the immigration issue. Um, immigration's been a very strong issue, and it probably has propelled Donald Trump to where he is today. When he talks about the wall, it's something that people are clearly responsible responding to. Um, why do you think you and, and Jeb Bush are both trailing behind him in well, your own home state? First of all, Donald was a supporter of Amnesty and of the DREAM Act, and he changed his position on those issues just to run for president. But beyond it, I would say I don't think that's the issue that's driving it. You know, Florida voters are following the national trends, and they're watching the news cycle. I'm confident that as we get closer to a real election in Florida, those numbers are going to change, and they will. Uh, but I would just say on immigration, it is a very legitimate issue. We, we're not going to be able to pass a comprehensive approach to the immigration problem. The votes don't exist. Uh, we tried that two years ago. The, the votes aren't there, even less now, after two unconstitutional executive orders, after a migratory crisis on the border. The only way to move forward on immigration begins by enforcing our immigration laws. Part of that is a wall on key sectors of the border, but we also need to E-Verify. We also need an entry-exit tracking system. And until you do that, you're not going to be able to do anything else on immigration. And I've been pretty clear about that in this campaign.
Let's take a look at these other polls. Quinnipiac shows you beating Hillary Clinton uh, in a head-to-head, -head, 46 to 41. And then let's show the New Hampshire poll, because in the early stages, as you say, Senator, this is going to be about those early states. Um, and you have moved up fairly dramatically, from 4% to 13% in the New Hampshire Republican presidential primary poll um, that was done by Monmouth University. I know you're headed to New Hampshire after this. And you keep saying that you believe that the dynamic at the top of those numbers, Trump and Carson, is going to change in the coming months. What is going to change it? What is the catalyst? Yeah, I think ultimately as voters begin to zero in, they're going to realize a couple things. Uh, you know, we now have a choice to make about who's going to be the leader of this country in the 21st century. And I'm confident that if we can continue to communicate who we are, what we'll do, uh, if given this chance, we're going to continue to improve. These polls will go up and down. They, and as I've said, historically, we know that these polls in the week before the election can change dramatically. So we're going to continue to do what we're doing. That's all I can control is my campaign and what we talk about. And we're going to continue to talk about our vision for America's future and our plan to get us there. And I have confidence the voters are going to choose us in the end. It'll take a while. It won't be overnight. But, uh, but look, the, po the polls are, at this point, they're going to be all over the place. I'm not too excited about them one way or the other. One last quick question for you. Jeb kind of went after you in the last debate. Um, do you expect him to do that again? He's talking yeah. a lot tougher in recent days, and there's a new Jeb. Jeb can fix it is, is the motto. What do you think? Well, I disagree that by attacking me, he's going to be better off in this campaign. But obviously someone in his campaign staff has convinced him that he needs to attack me in order to do better. And that's their right. They can choose that. I control my campaign. And my campaign isn't going to be about attacking any other Republicans. My campaign is going to be about what I'll do if given the chance to be president. So I'm going to continue to focus on that because that's what the people at home deserve. That's what they deserve for us to be fighting about. Senator, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you as always.